is the last screw coming out here. There's eight in total. And that's this. So we can see what's happening inside. Okay, that's your motor end. That's your drive gear from the motor onto the nylon gear from the motor pulling it backwards and forwards. Just gonna have a wee look at the wires just to make sure to see if any are disconnected. Very rarely this does happen with all due respect, but we check them all the same. Let's see if we can move the drive gear off. And when you pull this out, there's some micro switches in here. You need to be careful here, so there we go. Let's pull her out. Okay, there's one micro switch there. Oh, there's three in this one. Right, so what I'm going to do before I pull the whole shaft out, I'm going to check these micro switches, get my multimeter, and just to make sure to see they're all okay. So we've now dismantled it, so what I'm going to do is, as I say, get my multimeter out and we'll check the, the micro switches to make sure the micro switches are working. And we'll also check continuity of the motor, which are these two. White's positive, yellow's negative. And also we'll check continuity all these wires to here just in case there's a break in here with a constant movement. So here's my multimeter set to continuity, which is that one there. And mine will give an audible beep to tell me that everything's okay. So I'll put that in there for the motor. Okay, we've got a continuity in the motor. So now that I've checked continuity on here. I'm going to apply voltage to these connections here with an adapter that I've made for testing the motors, which is this here, a small adapter here. So it's just quite, you know, stick it on the positive side, we'll put the brown on positive side. If you put it on the wrong way around, it'll still work, it'll just turn the opposite way if it's working okay, I'll just hold it down in case it moves. And there you are, the motor's moving away. No problem at all. So the motor's okay. Figure that one out. I'll check the continuity from here to here. There's my multimeter. Taking the negative side. What I'll do is I'll touch all these pins here. I think the negative's the top left here, but what to do is touch all the pins just in case. They're cut and they're touching each other, so top left, that's your one there. And press all the other ones, so we know we've got continuity with that one there. And what I'll do is, I'll do the other side, the positive side. And if I'm not mistaken, the positive side is bottom right. So that's okay, but I'll also check all the other ones, listen. So I know that the positive and negative motor are okay from here to here. I know for a fact if I join that together, Apply the 29 volts, the motor will spin away quite happily. So we've got other, another four wires to check here. Um, check continuity of the micro switches, which we'll do. So usually when you put them on, they'll beep away in a micro switch when it slides up and down, it will go off. So that one's working away. That one's working away. So they're working. The micro switches are working. So we've got a wee device in here, which we're going to dismantle here. And we check, have a wee look in here to see if there's any problems in here. I'll just do that then out. Now I've now dismantled the motor. We've tested the continuity. We've put power on the motor. It's working away fine. Uh, so we know that's okay. So the next thing is to do, which we've done, is to test the continuity from all these cables from here to here to see if there's any faulty micro switches. We've done that and that's fine. So, next port of call is the loom. We need to do a continuity test on all the wires. So I've done these two there because I have done that because I applied the 
power to the motor and it's working fine so I know these cables I can see there's a a fine crack in there if you can see that but uh, it's not right through but maybe a fault in there so what I've got is my multimeter and I'll set that to my continuity setting which is that there put that out the road now because whenever I put them together I'll hear an audible beep so what I'm going to do and put my wee crimper on there now for certain jobs I've got a wee paper clip here and then I'll, I'll work that's a red one there I don't know where it goes so I'm just going to work my way around there we are it goes on to that one there I'll just go into all the other ones that nope, mustn't just that red one the next one is a white one we'll just check that nothing so I reckon there could be a problem right we'll just check all the other ones there just in case that's the black one the black one's there so that's that one that one's not broken and then we've got the blue one push that in there tight and that's that one there so we know for a fact that's got a faulty one here so the faulty wire is this particular red one here uh, sorry this white one the faulty wire is the the white one here so believe it or not you kind of buy this so what am i going to do or what could you do if you don't want to buy a whole motor well you can supply you one of these with the connection here now it's a, a lot of work to do this but it's the point of repairing something so what i need to do these are different than that one there so what I need to do is take this connection here take it to the workbench take this off solder the wires onto here then somehow I think I maybe need to heat it up remove this feed this in through here and then cut that and join it on here now what I can do which I'm sure I'll have somewhere as another six pin connector but with all due respect the cable's too short so when I put that back on the chair it's going to be too short and at the end of the day is it's an extra some more money to buy that so I'm just going to join it here so I think it's time to take it to the workbench and do a bit of soldering see how we get on so what I need to do now is cut the heat shrink off Cut these wires back. Right, so I need to cut this off now and then solder them on. Four pin connector, replacement connector on here. Right, that's them um, soldered up. So now all I need, I need to do now is join them up. We soldered the new connector on here. We put a set of crimps on here for the motor. So yellow to yellow and then green, green to white. And we put the new shrink tubing on here. So really, it's, it's it's all kind of putting it back together again, which I hope I can remember how I've done this. So what we need to do first of all is feed this through here. There we go. Now what I've also done is I've drilled a hole bigger in here and cut it, so I can slide it over there and then push it back in once I'm happy with it. So what we need to do connect up the motor connections back up the way we took it apart okay that's going to be in there then we need to feed a 
goes into the slide here. Join this together. We need to shove in here somehow. All these wires nice and neatly out of the way. Maybe the next time I do this, it doesn't have to be as long as that. The wires. So that's the gear on here. Let's close this back up again. Once I screw all this together, we just need to see if it works because it was faulty before. We've resoldered new connections on it. There we get top. Put on in there. So all we need to do now is try it out. So all we need to do now is stick our, our tester onto the riser motor. All the way home. Let's see. Up. Down. Up. So the fault was a broken wire in there. We've joined it together. I put a wee sleeve in there on top of it. Maybe put a bit of glue on top of there. But uh, that's just no problem there. That's it sorted. So it's easy to repair if you know how. So at least this gives you a little bit of insight on you know, 180 pound motor. How we can repair it with just a, a connector. Um, so it's easily done. We can supply the connectors. If you need those wee connectors, we can supply them. Heat shrink if you need. Just give us a wee bell and send us an email. Um, sadly the tester you can get but as long as you use a multimeter and you use your continuity you shouldn't have an issue there whatsoever uh, let's put it on sleep mode let's put it back on continuity oh, ohms resistance there you go continuity that is the easiest way um, to find out your problem. That's all we used. Don't get me wrong, this is a fluke, quite expensive, but you can get the same kind of tool for, I would say, about £10. That's, that's how I repaired this actuator. Easy repair. <laughs>